got plenty of time for this. You know, what could possibly go wrong? Well. So after shutting down the 2904 in 2017, um, Ben, Charlie, Safari Wilson, soldiered on with the torch of Cannonball and doing the c to c Express. And it was time for him to shut his down too because both of us knew at some point something was gonna go wrong. But Ben wanted to go out in a big way. And he always had the benefit of being from New Zealand. So if something went south, he literally just went south and he's gone. That's why I never had like a 50 car run because there's no way I could ever like live down if something actually happened. So he's like, yeah, we're going big. He goes, you gotta, you gotta be into it. I'm like, oh. Now his rules were similar to 2904, but his was, had to be from the Cannonball era, 79 or earlier, and it had to be $3,000 or less. I was like, that sounds like fun. Doing a Cannonball event that I didn't organize is much calmer and nicer. I had done a C2C earlier with Yummy and Marine King in uh, Lincoln, which, probably was most fun I'd ever had because I wasn't worried about organizing and anything happening. And we were driving a Lincoln across the country dressed as sea captains, listening to eight track tapes of Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass, recommended. And that was great. So I'm like, let's, let's totally do something. But what I never, mistakenly I think, kept any of my 2904 cars. And of course we had some real peaches. We had the Transcom Medevac Ambulance. We had the A-Team van. Um, probably my favorite was the General, which was the uh, the Caprice. You know, and I was like, I, I want a car I want to keep. I want to do a Cannonball on something I can keep and I can drive my son around in and and have some fun with and say, this is this car did a Cannonball. So I started looking and Ben was a little impatient. He actually started looking for me, unbeknownst to me. And then one day sends a messenger, he's found a vehicle that I need to buy and it's 3,000 bucks or $3,500. I'm like, okay, what is it? It's a 1971 GMC Suburban Ambulance, Stoner Ambulance, made by the Stoner Ambulance Company in Los Angeles. And it's about 100 miles from me on the coast of California. And he's like, you have to go get this. I'm like, oh, that's, that's crazy. Or is it? So, First step in anything like this is I have to ask my wife what she thinks of it. I'm like, what do you think? And almost immediately she's like, oh yeah, old ambulance, this works, absolutely. So thumbs up on the ambulance. So immediately give the guy a call. He's like, you know, it doesn't have an engine or transmission in it. I'm like, great, I don't want that antique in there anyway. You know, bombing across the country on an old three-speed transmission with a 400 carb a cubic inch carbureted engine, not, not, not ideal. So I'm like, that's exactly what I want, perfect. And he's like, you know, it's, you know, it's, you gotta rebuild it. It's not, you know, it's not, you're not driving it. I'm like, I'm completely aware of that. It took me like two or three phone calls to, to convince him that, guess what? I can come pick it up and take it off your hands and I'll take care of it. So I go to his house and there's not one stoner ambulance, but two. And mine was the parts vehicle for the one he was restoring. Now there is a fantastic community of what are called professional car enthusiasts. And they love ambulances, hearses, things like that, the professional cars. And they restore them and take great pride in them. And they're a really cool little corner of the automotive world. So he's like, I wrote an article on it. It's in a magazine and all this. I'm like, that's great. He's done all the history on it. So apparently this car, what, this ambulance was an ambulance in Los Angeles, and then it was sent up to Washington State, where it lived most of its life for a couple of ambulance companies. And then it was finally up for sale, and this hot rod guy in Idaho bought it, who just wanted the big four, I think it's the 402 V8 in it. And so he stripped the, the, the drivetrain out of it, and then he had found it and brought it home for parts, take off some of the lights and things. Now he didn't need it. I'm like, I'll take it. So I show up in the rain, hook it up, drag it out of there, get it home. And at this point, there's about, there's a few months before C2C is starting. I'm like, I got plenty of time for this. 
you know, what could possibly go wrong? Well, other things got in the way, lemons cars and moving to a new home and all kinds of stuff. So then it's like, oh, that's right. I've got this ambulance covered up in the backyard. I need to get this ready. I need to find an engine and transmission for it. So the hunt begins. And what I wanted to put in it was an LS. Why? Because it's the easiest swap you can make. I mean, you don't even need a full set of tools to do an LS swap. Everything's off the shelf. I don't have to fabricate anything. It's not like building the Corona. I can just bolt stuff in. So I go looking, I found some LSs. People wanted a lot of money for like the LQ9, which is what I was looking for, which is an earlier LS out of a Cadillac Escalade. And lots of power, great engine, six liter motor. And I'm like, why don't I just buy the whole damn truck? So I went on um, Copart and found me an Escalade in Los Angeles that had been smashed in the back. It was the perfect donor. Crushed in the back, brand new in the front, 70,000 miles on it. And I'm like, send it up to me. So I bought it for a few thousand bucks, brought it up. Now it's, it arrives slowly. They couldn't get it out of their lot for some reason. Some strange things happen. It's a whole other story. Gets to my house 30 days before the start of the C2C. So myself and my friend, uh, Matt Leyland, who's a hell of a mechanic and works for me at Fakar Classics. He's like, let's just do it. So we tear the engine out of it and drivetrain out of it and start ordering the parts. They start coming in and it actually starts going together too quickly, too well. Like I'm like, something's gotta go wrong here. And it didn't. I'm like, who's gonna race with me? And it's always hard to get a commitment from people, especially in an event like that. So number one on the team, Yummy, excellent. You know, I raced against Yummy so many years. I raced with him in the Lincoln. I'm like, Yummy's gotta come in the ambulance. He's like, well, I'll come, but if I can bring my son. I'm like, even better. Great, that's three of us. It's an ambulance. Let's do four. Why not? So my cousin-in-law, I give him a call. I'm like, Joe, you want to come? And he had raced in the last 2904 in a Volvo. He dressed like a hearse. And he's a wonderful guy. So he's like, I'm on board. I'm like, we got the team. I've got the ambulance. Everything's going great. We get some wheels and tires off an old Silverado, put it on there to get rid of the original wheels and tires. We start prepping it. And I'm like, oh, it's got the... Gurney in the back, named Dan. Are you with me? Okay. So, but there's no other seat. So I get one of my old race seats and throw it in the back, but I have time to install it, of course. And we get everything going. First turn, truck fires right up. Drive it across town with no exhaust to the muffler shop. We get the old exhaust hooked up to it. That is the day before we had to leave to be in time to get to the start. And I didn't have time to drive it across the country. So Joe flies out from Pennsylvania to Colorado. I drive it from California. And this is the night we finished it. It hadn't gone more than the trip to the muffler shop and back. That is the only testing we ever did. And this car hadn't moved a tire in decades. Why not? So off I go. We had a slight vibration in the new drive shaft we had, had to have made. But other than that, it seemed to be working okay. Seemed to be working really well. Like it was getting like 18 miles a gallon. And I was like, this something's gotta go wrong. Get to Colorado, we meet at the airport. He flies in, I pull into the parking lot. He hops on, I get back on a plane, fly home, and he drives all the way to Pennsylvania. So we get the car across the country in two days. And again, hasn't ever turned a wheel before this. He gets there and changes the oil. We get some new springs. The rear springs collapsed on the way out, easy enough, off the shelf. Some new springs, um, some new airbags in the back. And he finishes it the day before the C to C. Yeah, we met and we're like, now we're just gonna turn around <laughs> and head back across the country as fast as we have no idea how fast or what this thing's gonna do. It's the biggest event easily since the US Express in the 80s. There's dozens and dozens and dozens of cars. Some amazing things and some amazing drivers like ready to go for it, like Fred Ashmore and all those kind of guys. It's just like, and it's going down and there's Ed Bolian and there's, you know, Arnie and Doug and all those guys. And you're like, this is a who's who of Cannonball and the last big hurrah. And I'm like, I'm gonna beat all of them in my 
untested 71 ambulance with four people, actually three people and a child. Well, he's not that young, he was 16. So he, was, he, he got to drive. We're gonna destroy him in this flying brick. And the day comes and uh, we set off from good wives. And I have to say, the thing ran flawlessly. Like you always in the first few hundred miles coming out, in, out of that area, nervous, you're waiting for the, the thing to break. Something is going to happen. I know Ed and those guys, they blaze out of there. But whenever I did our crappy car versions, it was always, I was always tentative the first hundred miles because I'm like, we, we edged into the performance of the vehicle rather than trying to blow it up at the beginning. And we're going faster and faster. And it seemed to really enjoy like 87 miles an hour. On the drive out, I had to see how fast it would go. So when I got to my favorite area, which is Nevada to Salt Lake City, the stretch out there, I got the old girl up to 124 according to Waze. And she was loving it. I was terrified, but she was loving it. So we knew we could go fast. We were trying to find that place where fuel economy met the speed and comfort. And we have the windows down, there's no air conditioning going on. But I did leave out a, a little thing minutes before we left. There were a few film crews there, a couple guys from England. And Dave had been and, and filmed other events. I and he was like, I don't wanna go with the British guys. He goes, can I go with you? Now imagine that in a charming British accent. He's like, you know, I, I won't take up much room. I'll just, I'll just be in the back. And I'm like, there's no room. There's the two seats up front and there is a gurney, which nobody's touching because I'm sleeping on that. And there is a racing seat stuck in the corner. I go, that is four people. And then all of our luggage stuffed behind the racing seat. I go, where are you gonna go? There's the passenger, rear passenger door. There is a little, I mean, one foot box where it drops down so you can step out of the ambulance. He goes, I'll stay here. I'm like, excuse me? He goes, I'll just stay right here. I'm like, you're gonna spend 30, 40 hours in that little box, like you and your cameras. He's like, yeah, yeah, I won't get in your way. Everything will be fine. Things do. I'm like, what the hell? Sure. So Dave joined us. So there's five of us in this ambulance blazing across the country with the windows down and really having a fantastic time. It was a lot like the Lincoln where we just kind of just had a blast. And then we hit like the 20 hour mark or 24 hour mark, which we all know is kind of like silly time. And I'll never forget one of my favorite moments ever cannonballing is that we just started talking about like early 70s TV shows for some reason. And Yummy and I are sitting next to each other and we came like, we started doing imaginary pitches for 70s TV shows. And I'm like, okay, okay, how about this, all right? It's a guy, he's a Vietnam vet, but he's back, he's okay, but he's a little screwed up, but he needs a job. So he buys a truck and I'm not in any truck, a big rig, a big, big rig. People love big rigs, they love the CB. He does the CB, Vietnam vet, CB. Oh, how about this? He's got a monkey. He's got a monkey and a CB and a truck. You're gonna love it. It'd be a fantastic show, which of course is BJ and the Bear. And like, we were just going back and forth. We were laughing so hard, we were crying for about an hour. And every run we've ever done, there's always been that moment. But the, the 70s TV show pitches was great. Like we pitched the A-Team and we pitched Dukes of Hazard, and it was a blast. And we got it all on video because of the documentary guy in the back seat. Someday, hopefully we'll see that. I don't know if we ever will, but we made it across the country in 38 hours, 37 hours. You know what, at this point, it doesn't even really matter to me. I mean, people always ask what my times are. We made it across in under 40 hours, 37, and the real thing was we had a blast. And I got to keep, finally, I got to keep a cannonball car. Shopping for insurance can be an absolute nightmare, but it doesn't have to be thanks to Policy Genius. They're our sponsor for this month at VinWiki, and you can visit them at the link in the description below. You tell them a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your property, and they find the best deal by shopping amongst all the major carriers at the same time. In fact, you can bundle things like homeowner's insurance and auto insurance, and the average user that bundles both of those things saves about $1,100 a year. So be sure to check them out and thank them for their support of VinWiki.